Welcome once again to Noir Alley. I'm Eddie Muller. Consider me your personal G-man, as in garrulous guide through this seedy and sketchy part of the TCM universe. And I'm not the only G-man you get today. Our feature presentation is full of them, including one tough nut familiar to loyal Noir Alley viewers. Broderick Crawford stars as a dogged FBI agent in Down Three Dark Streets, released by United Artists in 1954. He plays a G-man in the FBI's Los Angeles office, investigating the death of a colleague who's killed while working three different cases. Crawford picks up the trail in each of them, hoping not only to close the cases, but find the murderer in the process. It eventually became routine for television cop shows to have several separate plot lines running through a single episode, a narrative structure employed by influential shows such as Hill Street Blues and NYPD Blue. But in 1954, the structure was still fresh and innovative, one of the things that helped this film earn good reviews. It was also lauded for its direction and cinematography, as the filmmakers exploited all sorts of actual locations around L.A., including a climax that gave viewers the closest view ever of a certain Hollywood landmark. The film is based on a 1953 book called Case File FBI by the husband and wife team Gordon and Mildred Gordon, who signed their work simply The Gordons. The couple had attended the University of Arizona together, got married, and worked as journalists before dedicating themselves to writing crime fiction. Most of their 19 novels feature FBI agent John Rip Ripley, the character Crawford plays in today's movie. It helped the veracity of their books that Gordon Gordon had actually been an FBI agent, working home front counterintelligence during World War II. When the Gordons sold their novel Make Haste to Live to Republic Pictures in 1950, they got a crash course in Hollywood economics. Screenwriter Warren Duff got paid $40,000 to adapt the novel into a script, while they were paid only $5,000 for the rights to their book. After that, the Gordons became screenwriters themselves and only sold their books on the condition that they'd also be paid to write the screenplay. Today's film is the first time any producer took them up on it. The Gordons had a couple of later hits as well. They authored both the book and screenplay for 1962's excellent thriller Experiment in Terror, in which Glenn Ford played Agent John Ripley. And with the 1965 Disney film That Darn Cat, the Gordons reaped a windfall by turning one of their standard FBI yarns into a daffy comedy that featured Haley Mills, Neville Brand, and a slinky Siamese cat. The Gordon script for this film was given a final polish by an old pro, Bernard Schoenfeld, who'd written on such significant noirs as Phantom Lady, The Dark Corner, and Caged. Case File FBI was renamed Down Three Dark Streets after FBI director J. Edgar Hoover, who'd seen a copy of the script, refused to provide his support, claiming its attention to detail was providing blueprints to criminals. Executive producer Edward Small had the same issues with Hoover over another film he'd made, 1948's Walk a Crooked Mile. Unfortunately, the run-in with Hoover did not prevent the filmmakers from attaching the standard anthemic intro about the majesty of the FBI, a cinematic genuflection that only ended when Hoover died in 1972. This one is intoned by William Woodson, who sounds exactly like Reed Hadley and Art Gilmore, the other go-to guys for this sort of thing. Coincidentally, Broderick Crawford would portray the FBI boss in the 1977 film The Private Files of J. Edgar Hoover. Eddie Small was not the actual maker of this film. It's the work of a production company called Levy Gardner Laven, three guys who'd met during the war. They served in the first motion picture unit of the Army Air Forces, which was made up entirely of movie professionals. That's where Jules Levy, Arthur Gardner, and Arnold Lavin learned their craft, making training films. Post-war, the pals reunited to produce low-budget independent movies. Their first three were all 50s variations on 40s noir, 
Without Warning, a 1952 example of what would later be known as a slasher film, Vice Squad, a 1953 police procedural starring Edward G. Robinson, and today's movie, made in 1954. All three are enhanced by the cinematography of the great Joe Byrock, one of the most prolific and versatile DPs in movie history. Co-starring Ruth Roman, Martha Heyer, and Marisa Pavan, here's an intriguing trio of crime cases delivered in one neat package, Down Three Dark Streets.